is Dr. Rick dropping in on you. You, you. you know how it goes. You believe in the work we're doing? Show some love, show some support, donate. Uh, got just a couple of things I want to talk to you about. Uh, this is going to be brief because I have another stop to make. Uh, but as I look at a lot of things that are going on and some of the conversations that we've been having, uh, I want to uh, I want to implore us to take what's happening in our communities more seriously. I want us to stop being reactive and be proactive, engaging things, not waiting on things to happen. Uh, there's far, much, far too much going on in our communities. <clears throat> for us to be behaving and acting so casually. It comes a point in time where inactivity leads to destruction. I'm looking at how many of our kids are dying in our communities, how many of our babies are dying at the hands of our own. Uh, I'm looking at the gender war. I'm looking at the fact that the racial wealth gap is widening. I'm looking at um, the miseducation of our youth, special, the disproportionality in special education referrals of young black boys, the misdiagnosis of ADHD, oppo oppositional defiant disorder for young black boys. I'm looking at uh, a still a rapidly growing prison population for black males and even females now. Uh, I'm looking at the fact that we consistently play along and I'm looking at uh, the fact that we uh, consistently play along with a system that does not serve us, that we consistently contribute to an environment that does not serve us. For years, I have been talking to you about the need to properly racially socialize our boys, the need to properly create a strong racial identity for girls and boys, the need to develop uh, the capacity to build wealth and to start within the home, uh, to shift our thinking and how we approach things. The need for critical thought is so much. One of the things that's really frustrating me now is the ego of, specifically the ego of the black male intellectual. There are some black females with, with, with platforms that are problematic as well, but I'm talking specifically about black men. I am definitely not calling any names because this isn't about creating drama. I'm not out here to beef with someone to get likes and, and shares and get my viewership up. That's the game that's being played at the expense of our people. Uh, we have too many brilliant minds for all of us to be beefing with one another, trying to take what we think is this one little pill, one little piece of the pie, and everybody's fighting over it, everybody's ego involved. Which you've heard me say over and over again that even with the 30 years of research, almost 80,000 hours of research, specifically dedicated to the black community. Now, obviously, I've done research in other areas, but just dedicated to the black struggle. 80, almost 80, uh, approaching 79,000 hours of research into African American adolescent, uh, male, adolescent and young adult male violence, uh, the impact of serial force displacement in our community, which includes benign neglect, urban renewal, uh, the evolution of redlining, which still exists, whether you believe it or not. Uh, <clears throat> gentrification uh, and what that means not only economically but what it also means socially uh, on the sociological level and on an econo uh, economic sociological and health level it's impacting our physical physical health uh, I have done research on uh, the mechanisms and machinations in play to keep us at bay on an economic level and what ways we can overcome that. I disseminated a lot of what I found in uh, my 25th book, which was The War on Black Wealth, Breaking the Code of Generational Wealth. 
uh, I put together a very, very dynamic, comprehensive course on well building, wealth building. I interviewed some of the most brilliant minds in finance, names that are at the top of the list. These are all heavy hitters. I didn't put my knowledge, I went and got their knowledge. And the thing is, every last one of them says it's accessible to anyone. The way that people are kept poor is they're kept ignorant. They're kept, they're, they're constantly flooded with a mindset that produces consumerism. You can never be a consumer minded person and build wealth. The idea of buying something that depreciates in value versus investing in something that appreciates in value is completely different. Uh, and I can go on and on of the things that I have put into it and I have said constantly, I have no problem with putting somebody else's name on it if that'll get people to come in and connect. I have no problem with sharing the stage. I have no problem with standing in the background. What I want is to see us come together and create unity. You've heard me say this many times before. When J. Edgar Hoover was asked what was the, what was the greatest threat to national security, at the time, we were in a Cold War with the Soviet Union, but he didn't say the Soviet Union. At that time, we were dealing with the rise of uh, China as a threat, even even then, 50 years ago. We were looking at uh, the entire Middle East, the, all Arab nations who were hostile towards us. We had just come out of the Cuban Missile Crisis, and yet J. Edgar Hoover's <clears throat> response was black unity. The thing he feared more than anything was black unity. And it wasn't just something he said. You can look at the resources that were put into play by the FBI to disrupt black unity. COINTELPRO disrupted and destroyed the Black Nationalist Party, interrupted and destroyed uh, the Black Panther Party. Uh, was responsible for the assassination of some major players who were financing those parties and the coming together of unity. Uh, and the creation of autonomy. It wasn't that the Black Panthers were carrying guns. It was that the Black Panthers were feeding people in the community, educating people in the community, creating a sense of autonomy and a, a, a mindset that says we can do it for ourselves. That is something that frightens them. It frightens them because that is the source of our power. Trying to prove to them that we are where they are outspending them in the purchase of luxury vehicles. We buy twice as many Mercedes as them, and yet their household income, median income, it, their household median wealth is 177,000. Our household median wealth is 17,000. And yet we are outspending them in unnecessary purchases, trying to prove that we arrived, trying to prove our success through what we accumulate instead of uh, uh, proving our success by the power we develop. At some point, we are going to have to see the urgency here because at some point, what we think is safe will prove to be completely unsafe. We are becoming increasingly un unrelevant, I mean, irre irrelevant uh, as other groups rise in power in economic influence and political influence the need to cater to the ideas or demands of blacks is diminishing. And we don't even pay attention to it because we are playing a game where they are writing the narrative, they are producing the image, and we are buying into it. At some point, we're going to have to realize that we're being played on a political level, on an academic level, on a social level, definitely on an economic level. And we're going to have to start looking at the facts. We're going to have to start applying what we know. We're going to have to start investing in those who are capable of putting their minds to the plow and creating solutions. Whining about problems does not fix solutions. One of the things my great grandfather taught me early was that don't come to me whining about anything that you haven't already tried to fix. The, pro the, the answer is always in the solution, son, not in complaining. Complaining does nothing but make you feel helpless. And complaining is a result of helplessness. helplessness. So when I see all of the complaints, all of the protests, and I told you, Protests by blacks are never taken seriously, no matter what we tear up, no matter what we burn up, no matter how 
violent we we protest violently we protest it means nothing because we have nothing to follow up that protest with a protest is a precursor a protest is a forewarning a protest says we have a complaint and if you don't respond favorably to our complaint this is what's going to happen to you there is no this with us we have no uh threat we don't have the economic power to enact economic sanctions to hurt them economically and we don't have the unity to do it we're too busy playing the game and trying to prove something by enriching them we're going to buy their cars we're going to buy their five thousand dollar bags we're going to buy their high expensive uh fashion uh apparel because it gives us the impression of being successful we don't have the real true power that represents success and that's autonomy to do whatever we need to do for ourselves without asking anybody to help us. We don't have that. So what we do is we seek symbolism. We seek the symbols of what we desire because we can't have the true thing. So we don't get the power, but we'll buy the Mercedes. We'll buy the Jordans. We'll go shop in in Louis Vuitton and Gucci and Balenciaga and all of these different places. And we'll spend our money and we'll walk around and look like a million bucks and uh, at the same time stress about how we're gonna pay the mortgage if we have a mortgage to pay. And we've got to stop. It's time for us to stand up. I, I'm challenging you because I literally see this. I gather information literally daily on our behavior. And the thing is that's scary is it's not improving. It's getting worse. And that was going to come a time if nothing doesn't shift, that we're going to be at the mercy of the very people we claim are oppressing us with no leverage, no way of defending ourselves, no way of keeping them off. And we don't see it because we bought into the illusion, we bought into the lie, and we're sticking our heads right into the furnace. I'm gonna leave you with that. And I hope that at some point it sticks. I love you guys. As I said, if you believe in the work we're doing at the Odyssey Project and the work we've been doing for uh, officially more than 20 years, me more than 30 years, Go look in the description box. Show your love, show your support. But we need to come together. On that note, I'm out of here. Thank you guys. Have an unbelievable day. Yeah. Yeah. They said I should give it up like that just ain't good enough. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time you know outside of the businesses that i run like myriad business solutions the visionetics institute odyssey media group i also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in houston dallas and other areas uh, i'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the odyssey project is doing in the inner cities uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. I'm free to be